Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving static equilibrium. And this is a situation we have. We have the step-by-step -step sine sine, which has a mass of 25 kilograms. It is supported by these two cables. This cable makes an angle of 63 deg degrees with the roof, and this cable makes an angle of 38 degrees with the roof. And we would like to be able to figure out what is the tension, T1 in cable 1, and what is the tension force T2 in the other cable. Now this problem involves static equilibrium. Static because the sign is not moving and equilibrium because the sum of all the torques, the sum of all the forces in the x direction and the sum of all the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. Now in this problem we don't have any turning forces so there is no torque but we are going to sum up the forces in the x direction and set them equal to zero and we're going to sum up the force in the y direction and equal, set them equal to zero because we have static equilibrium. Now, we want to sum up the forces. The first thing we're going to do, the first step in this step-by-step -step science video, is we are going to draw in all the forces. And I like to think of all the forces acting right here because we want to know the tension in this cable and the tension in this cable. So we want to know what's kind of pulling down this way. And the first force that we're going to draw in is the force of gravity mg which points straight down in the negative x excuse me the negative y direction now we have also have the force of tension in cable 1 and the force of tension in the other cable those are the two we're trying to solve for those are the forces that are working on this system now, we want to be able to sum up the forces in the x and the y direction. You'll notice only mg really acts in the y direction. T1 and T2, the other two forces, the other two tension forces, are acting somewhere between the x and the y axis, the y axis and the x axis. That tells us that we're going to have to break T1 and T2 down into their component forces, their x and their y components. We're going to do that. We're going to draw T1x. That vector represents the x component of T1. And this vector represents the y component of T1. And we can do the x component and the y component of the tension force in the other cable, also T2. Okay? Now, the first, the next thing I just want to remind you of, we have kind of opposite interior angles here for these parallel surfaces, this one and this one. So if this angle is 63 degrees, then this angle right here must also be 63 degrees. And if this angle right here is 38 degrees, then this angle right here must also be 38 degrees. Okay, so the next step is to actually sum up the forces in the x and the y direction. You will notice we have two forces in the x direction. T2x pointing in the positive direction and T2y pointing in the opposite or the negative direction. So therefore, for the sum of the x forces, we're going to write down T2x minus T1x equals zero. For the forces in the y direction, we really have three forces. Mg points down and the, this force is in equilibrium with the y components of our tension forces. And those point in the positive direction, so we're going to put down that T1y plus T2y minus mg equals zero. Okay, so now we have finished kind of the next step, which is to sum up the forces in the x direction and then sum up the forces in the y direction. Now we're going to write a term for each of these five terms, T2x, T1x, T1y, T2y, and m. G. Now, if you've had some experience or you think you've had enough experience with trigonometry and your sine and your cosine functions, you'll notice that, for example, T1x is the cosine of 63 times T1 and T1y is the sine of 63 and the same thing for the other side. But I like to write them all down. And before we actually get into the angles, we're going to solve mg first. So I'm going to put down that mg, because we know the mass is 25, we know g is 9.8. Mg, the weight, the force of gravity on the sine is 25 times 9.8, which is 245 newtons. Now, for all of the x and the y components, we're going to use our uh, trig function, sine and cosine. 
We'll start with T1x. You'll notice T1x is adjacent to 63 degrees angle, to this 63 degree angle. Therefore, we're going to use the cosine, and that means that T1x is equal to the cosine of 63 times T1. T1y is opposite. The opposite is the sine function. And therefore, T1y is the sine of 63 times T1. And we can do the same thing for the x and the y components of the other force tension 2. That means T2x is the cosine of 38 times T2. And T2y is the sine of 38 times T2. You'll notice we have five terms. And then we have five terms here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we're going to just substitute those in. So for T2x, for the sum of the forces in the x direction, we're going to substitute it in T2x minus T1x, and we get that the cosine of 38 times T2 minus the cosine of 63 times T1 is equal to 0. And we'll do the same thing for the sum of the forces in the y direction using our sines. And then we have our sine functions, sine of the angles, and we know that mg is equal to 240 plus, so I put that down there, okay? Now, you'll notice that we have one equation, two equations, we have two variables, t1 and t2, t1 and t2. Each equation has a t1 and a t2 in it, so we would say we have two equations and two variables, and we can use a little bit of algebra and solve for t1 and t2, which we're going to do on the next slide. I'm going to bring this equation and this equation over with us to the next slide. And now we can decide to either solve for T1 or T2 first and use this equation to start with or this equation. I like to, since it's T1, we'll do T1 first. This is kind of the easier equation that we can substitute into here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to solve this equation for T2. Then we can substitute the answer into this equation for T2, and then we'll have T1 and T1. We can solve for T1 first. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to solve this equation for T2. That means I'm going to take this term, which is negative, and move it to the other side, and then divide by the cosine of 38 degrees. So T2 is equal to the cosine of 63 times T1 divided by the cosine of 38. And if you do that on your calculator, you get that T2 is equal to 0 0.58 times T1. Now, like I said, we can take this term now, because T2 is equal to 0 0.58 times T1. We can substitute this term into this equation right here for T2. That will go right there. And then you'll notice we have T1 and T1. And we, can, we have one equation and one variable that we can solve for T1. So I'm going to do that now. We still have the sine of 63 T1. We still have the sine of 38, but instead of T2, I'm going to have, instead of the sine of 38 times T2, I have the sine of 38 times 0 0.58 T1 minus 245. Okay, now we're going to take the next step. The sine of 63 is 0 0.89. The sine of 38 times 0 0.58 is 0 0.63 T1 minus 245. You can see I'm just carrying the 245 through. Now I can combine these two terms. I get 1.25. I also moved minus 245 over to this side. So I have 1.25 T1 equals 245 Newtons. And now I can just solve for T1. T1 is equal to 245 Newtons divided by 1.25. And you get that T1, this tension force, is 196 Newtons. Okay, now we still need T2. But you can see up here, we have this equation, which this equation, which we rearrange and solve for T2. T2 is equal to 0 0.58 of T1. So now I can simply take this 196, because this is T1, and substitute it into this equation. 0 0.58 times 196. And I get that T2 is equal to 113.7 Newtons. And that is the end of our problem. Okay, we went through those steps, we drew the forces, we broke the forces down, we wrote the terms, we substituted in, we used the equations to solve for T2, and then to solve for T1, and then to go back and solve for T2 again. All right, I think if you follow those steps, it's pretty straightforward, it's a little bit of algebra, draw your pictures, take your time, and I think it works out pretty well. 
Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can do one or all of these three things. Subscribe to my channel. You get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this video or you can leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. That makes me feel real nice. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.